I think that there's sort of a pandemic of making assumptions, for example, that a new mother won't be as committed and can't take on the next big project and doesn't want to travel. And when you make those assumptions, even if you think you're making them benevolently, you have just taken the power of a woman to define her own career steps out of her own hands. And so that that not making assumptions piece is huge. Welcome to On Record PR, where we go on record with industry leaders to discuss best practices for public relations strategies that drive business success. Let's get started with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to On Record PR. I am Jennifer Simpson Carr, the producer and a guest host of the show. I'm also the mom to a wonderful eight year old daughter. Today, I am going on record with attorney, CEO, author, and mom, Lori Mahalik-Levin, to discuss navigating the back-to-work transition from parental leave. Before I invite Lori onto the show, I want to give a little bit more background about Lori. As the CEO and founder of Mindful Return, she believes in empowering working parents. Mindful Return is a movement that helps new moms and dads navigate the uncertain terrain of working parenthood. Lori is the author of Back to Work After Baby, How to Plan and Navigate a Mindful Return from Maternity Leave, and co-host of the Parents at Work podcast. She is a mama to two wonderful redheaded boys, ages 9 and 11, and is a healthcare lawyer in private practice. Her thoughtful leadership has been featured in publications including Forbes, The Washington Post, New York Times Parenting, and Thrive Global. I invite you to learn much more about Lori in her full biography in the show notes on our website. Without further ado, welcome to the show, Lori. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for the lovely introduction. I'm so happy to be with you today. I'm so glad to be joined by you. I shared with you in preparing for this that I actually had my beautiful daughter while I was working in-house at a mid-sized law firm in their business development department. And so I am thrilled to be talking to you about a very important topic. And I am sure there are many things that you're going to be sharing with me that I wish I knew then (laughs) that I hope we can help um, new parents with now. So let's just dive right in. Please tell us more about yourself lawyer, mom, CEO, how you started doing this this wonderful work. Sure. So I like to say that generally speaking, I wear three hats and I know we all wear like 742 hats every day, but there are three main ones for me. One is mom to these you know, nine and 11 year old boys, very similar in age to your daughter. Um, my oldest just started middle school. So that's been its own adventure. So that's hat number one. Hat number two is that I'm the CEO and founder of Mindful Return. And I'll tell you in a minute how I came to do that role. But hat number three is that I'm a Medicare regulatory lawyer slash nerd in Washington, D.C., who who like has a, a, a niche that's a centimeter wide and a million miles deep in Medicare reimbursement land. And right now I do that as my quote unquote side gig. So I do have my own firm. I left big law last summer and have my own firm where I practice a little bit. But in mine for return land, approximately eight years ago, after the birth of my second son, I realized that I was in a pretty dark place. I had one baby return to work after parental leave full-time and found it to be challenging. And then two years later, had baby number two and definitely went off the rails. I am certain that I had some undiagnosed postpartum anxiety. My husband and I like to say that one plus one felt like 85 at the time. Things were just sort of coming apart. And I looked around for resources that could help me as a working parent. And I found two categories of things, Jennifer. I found snarky advice, like don't put a picture of your family on your desk where people won't take you seriously. And I found advice along the lines of you're going to leak on your shirt if you're pumping at work. So maybe you just shouldn't do that. So that was not helpful. And then the other thing that I found was tons and tons of advice focused on baby, which is great. And we need all the resources about how to puree baby food and massage our babies and all that good stuff. But there wasn't anything about my own personal and professional identity transition that I was going through to working parenthood and sort of how how to navigate that transition. So I set out to create what I wished had existed for myself. That's wonderful. And something that is on your website really resonated with me. And it's the comment that says, imagine feeling confident about your decisions, both as a parent and a professional. Mm -hmm. Something that so many of us, struggled with coming back to work, yes. still struggle with today. So can you tell me what are some of the most common challenges you see among new parents returning to work after parental leave? 
Yeah. I mean, you hit on the first one, which is just that confidence and the ability to feel as though you're doing the right thing on a daily basis, whatever the right thing is for you. Often we feel like we're meant to be parenting without respect to the fact that we have a job and working at a job without respect to the fact that we're parenting. The big G word, right? Guilt, the I'm walking out of the office at the end of the day or shutting down because I need to go get my child because childcare closes. Uh, there was a $10 a minute penalty at my daycare <laughs> and you know, we had to get there, right? <laughs> For me, there was the struggle of the fact that my first son would not take a bottle. And so I was pretty convinced that the story I told myself was if I went back to work, then I'd be killing him because he would die because he couldn't take a bottle. So there was that struggle to work through. I, I wound up having excess lipase in my breast milk that caused it to turn sour after a few hours. So I had to like scald the milk. And it was just this whole thing that I had no idea was in store for me as a working parent. There's the sleep deprivation, right? There's the, you're not sleeping for any more than potentially three consecutive hours a night, Mm -hmm. if that sometimes, and that can really play with your your mind. And there's just sort of the the well-documented motherhood biases that we know exist in the workplace that make you realize that people are making assumptions about you that maybe you would prefer that they not make. So, I mean, there's a lot packed into to that transition period. I like to remind people though, that the transition back to work after parental leave is not an event. It is not a one day thing. It is not a one week thing. It is a process. And it's probably like a one year process. And I think both employers and individuals would do well to keep that in mind and remember that it's not a once and done sort of sort of thing. That's a great point. And it does raise the question, how can employers support their employees through this transition period that, as you said, is not a day or a week. Yes. It really <laughs> is an ongoing process of a new you know, lifestyle and life that, that parents are living. Yes. And there are so many things that employers can do. Some cost money and some do not. I think the ones that don't are really around mindset shifts and how we talk about the transition, putting programs in place that encourage managers and their direct reports, if it's at a law firm, a partner, and the associate to have structured conversations about how they're going to phase out of work and then how they're going to phase back in. Mentoring programs can be put into place. Having the long view and saying, I'm invested in this person for the long run, and I know that there's going to be a shift and change in how they're working, and I'm committed to their career success. You know, having that sort of attitude shift can really help. I mean, there are plenty of things like formal policies, paid parental leave is important, on and off ramp policies that allow for phased out and phased in returns are really important. And just as important as how the the leadership at your organization communicates about this issue. Are they encouraging people to take their full leave, whether they're a, a new mom or a new dad? Are they modeling that for other employees? The language that we use around leave really matters. I mean, there, there are tons of ideas of ways that employers can help, but step number one, go talk to your new parents. See how they experience their leave. See how they experience their return. Where are the gaps? Are the policies clearly communicated? Do they know what support is available to them? How did it go? You know, take their pulse. I think that is a wonderful first step if you're wondering what your employee population needs. Those are great recommendations. And so many, so many things that you said resonate with me. In our work, we advise our clients on how to communicate internally and externally and Mm -hmm. clear communication and transparent communication is so critical at any context. (laughs) And so I just echo that, that, you know, clearly communicating to these parents, but also listening, you know, and understanding what they need. I just had a wonderful interview with a woman, um, Catherine Manning, who is also based in DC and supports companies on workplace trauma. And her sentiment was, don't assume that you know what people need. Have those conversations and listen, and then put processes and policies in place that actually support the people who they are in place for. So I love- uh, Amen. (laughs) Yes. I think that there's sort of a pandemic of making assumptions, for example, that a new mother won't be as committed and can't take on the next big project and doesn't want to travel. And when you make those assumptions, even if you think you're making them benevolently, you have just taken the power of of a woman to define her own career steps out of her own hands. And so that that not making assumptions piece is huge. And I, I would love to meet Catherine. Yes. I will absolutely <laughs> make that introduction. I'm, I'm sure she'd love to meet you as well. And let's pause here to hear a message from our sponsor. 
This episode is brought to you by Furia Ruble Communications. Recognized as the number one agency by the National Law Journal, Furia Ruble helps top businesses and law firms with high stakes public relations and marketing, reputation management, crisis planning, and incident response, including high profile litigation media relations. To learn more, go to furiarubel.com or email podcast at furiarubel.com. What unique impacts have you seen to new parents as a result of COVID? Yeah, I think new parents and COVID, I mean, being a new parent is ridiculously hard. Being a new parent during COVID, I was totally next level. I can't really imagine having gone through it because I didn't have a child during that time. But what I witnessed was some pros and some cons, right? So some of the pros were an opportunity to spend more time bonding with baby and not send them to childcare, for example, an opportunity to continue to nurse and breastfeed a baby and not have to pump all day long. Some of the downsides have been severe isolation and the inability to gather with other new parents as one might in you know a mom group after having a child and the guilt that can set in when one is trying to work from home while the baby is in the next room as opposed to you being somewhere else. So I know that there were a lot of noise canceling headphones purchased during the pandemic. <laughs> I have those as well, actually. Yes. You know, so it sounds like there were some real benefits to parents having more time and maybe some easier times in terms of breastfeeding versus pumping. But many are now transitioning back to the office in either a hybrid capacity or some even full time. Why is it so important for employers to encourage both moms and dads to take the time, the parental leave time that they have available? Mm, So... I am a firm believer, and I'll get up on a soapbox about the idea that parental leave needs to be degendered. And the reason, a reason it needs caregiving and parental leave need to be degendered is that otherwise it will always continue to be a stigma for new moms. People will be, you know, in the hiring process, oh, is she going to go out on leave? Well, guess what? If anyone can go out on leave, it removes that question, right? Now, how to encourage fathers and mothers to both take the time? I think an important shift in language that one can use as a manager is to say to any man who learns that he's going to become a father, when are you going to take your parental leave? Not, oh, are you going to take any time off? No. Say, when are you going to go out? And when's the start date? When's the end date? And let's figure out how to, you know, put that into the schedule. Because at some point, you're going to want to encourage everybody to be taking that leave. There is great data that shows that women's careers do better the more parental leave a father takes. And so if we're going to narrow the gender pay gap, if we're going to help address the problems in the leaky women's leadership pipeline, then we need to recognize caregivers as caregivers, no matter their gender. I will say amen to that. Because <laughs> I'll get I off my soapbox now. <laughs> I have heard wonderful examples of parents really tag teaming for lack of a better Mm -hmm. phrase, their parental leave to make sure that both are supported in their careers Mm -hmm. somewhat equally Mm -hmm. and that they both have the time at home with the child and not necessarily always overlapping. So that's fantastic advice. So going back to kind of this push and pull of career and children, you talk about loving your children and your career as so many of us do. What strategies do you have for dealing with that inner conflict? Yeah, so I've learned this wonderful phrase and philosophy from Dr. Yael Schoenbrunn at Brown University. And she has a book coming out in November that I'm like, I just started digging into a pre-reader version, but it is all about the concept of work-life enrichment. And the idea that although we tend to look at work and quote unquote life as these like opposing poles that are pulling at each other and competing and vying for one another's attention, in reality, work benefits from life and life benefits from work. And so when I can keep that in mind, when I can remember to tell myself that I am a better mom because I am working and you know engaged in these things that keep me interested and active and feel like I'm making a contribution to the world, I parent better. And I am a better. CEO of Mindful Return because I stop every day to go have dinner and bath and bed with my kids and turn off work and allow my brain to reset and allow the creativities to sort of feed off of one another. And so when I can remember that, I feel like I'm in a better place. I also want to offer a construct that a leadership coach recently taught me around guilt, which is when you're sitting there saying, I feel guilty because whatever it's you're feeling guilty about, if you can reframe that phrase, I feel guilty because into 
I made this decision because it can really help you to ground in your own values, your own judgment and say, oh, well, actually I did make this decision for a good reason. And therefore I'm not going to dwell on the other things that I could be doing right now. Releasing others' expectations of me has been a long, long decade journey, but it is one that I think has benefited my emotional state amazingly. That is wonderful advice. And I think that's a challenge for for many of us is Mm -hmm. others living up to others' expectations. So can you tell us a little bit more about the services that Mindful Return offers to both new parents and employers? Sure. So our core programs, the reason Mindful Return came to be is really programs around the transition back to work after parental leave. So we have a program for new moms and we have a program for new dads. And it's a four-week cohort-based online program that people can join from anywhere that really help them make the transition back to work after leave in a calmer, more empowered way. So it's four weeks, four themes. The first week is about a mindful mindset for going back to work. This is sort of how to get your head in a better place. The second week is all about the logistics of return, sort of everything from navigating the childcare transition to figuring out your schedule to how you're going to nourish and feed your baby. The third week is all about leadership in the space of return and focusing on the skills that we gain through parenthood that are really actually useful in our careers. And then the fourth week is all about building and staying in community so you don't isolate yourself and wind up crying on the kitchen floor like I did for way too long. We work currently with 93 different employers that offer the program as a parental leave benefit. And it's a way to make sure that your employee is feeling supported in the transition. Oh, just one other thing. We have had, I think over 2000 people go through the program at this point and our alums started saying to us, okay, I'm back from leave and now I have a toddler. Now I have a school age kid and things are still hard. So we developed something that we call the Mindful Return 201 program as well for experienced parents. And in that program, we work on time management, self-care, connection to community and career advancement. So, you know, we've sort of expanded and grown in certain ways. We have international offerings now as well. Uh, We have a chapter in the UK, in South Africa, in India, in Spanish and in Portuguese. That's wonderful. And those are all such valuable resources for families. Transitioning back to work is such a difficult Yes, difficult <laughs> venture, and to have those resources available sound amazing. So I'm glad that they're they're there because I also found similar feedback when I was searching for how to transition to what you described <laughs> earlier in our conversation. And so this is an actual resource that that people, particularly in law firms, who are really dealing with long schedules and demanding mm-hmm. hours and you know really intense work mm-hmm. that require you know, being on, if you will, regardless of whether on a computer in the office. So thank you for these resources. I'm going Mm -hmm. to check them out. Maybe (laughs) 2.0. Yes, the 201 version. Yes. (laughs) Yes. No one is ever too old for 201. (laughs) Yes. So Lori, where can our listeners get in touch with you if they'd like to learn more? Sure. So our website is www.mindfulreturn.com. You can feel free to link in with me and say that you listen to this podcast and I would be happy to connect. I do a Tuesday tip for working parents. So you can follow on Instagram at Mindful Return. On our website, we have a free document called 99 Questions to Ask Yourself Before, During, and After Parental Leave that can be of use. And there's also a page on our website specifically for employers that you can find in the the heading at the top of the page. But I guess the last thing I'll say, two other things. You can find my book, Back to Work After Baby, on Amazon and all the usual places that one finds books. And I co-host a podcast called Parents at Work that you can check out. I co-host it with my husband. So he and I have a fun time um, representing the mom and dad versions of uh, working parenthood. That's great perspective. We will make sure that all of those places are very well linked throughout the show Beautiful. notes. Thank you. And so it will make it very easy for the listeners to find you. I want to thank you for your time today. This was such a fun conversation, such an important conversation that impacts so many of us families that, you know, haven't done this before or are <laughs> transitioning to big, larger families and learning all these things again for the first time. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for sharing your insights and thank you to our listeners as well. Thanks for having me on, Jennifer, and for highlighting this really important subject. I appreciate it and good luck in your own working parent journey. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for listening to On Record PR. Visit our website, onrecordpr.com to subscribe to the show, share it with your friends on social media, Find show notes, additional episodes, and more information. We'll see you next time. 
In the meantime, feel free to send us questions or show ideas at podcast at onrecordpr.com.